Hey there, YouTube, this is SJM4306. So like two years ago, I, I picked up the NES Classic and the SNES Classic, both sort of homages to the original consoles with built-in games. And when they announced this Game & Watch, uh, Super Mario Bros, whatever you want to call this, it's basically a portable version of their classic systems. And it's a homage to the original Game & Watch. So yeah, I um, knew I had to get one of these guys. Uh, just to compare it to the original Game & Watch and uh, just see what all the fuss was about. So yeah, I just wanted to show off some of the Game & Watch stuff that I have uh, in my collection because obviously this video is going to be centered around this. The uh, Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch that Nintendo released. And these are supposedly uh, going to be limited uh, release. So I believe after, I think like April or so, uh, March or April, they're going to discontinue um, production of this. So I wanted to get one for my collection. It's not something, you know, if you really want to play these games, emulation is pretty much the way to go. Or um, there's a number of ports on other systems. So there's there's really no point in getting this if your purpose is to buy the game itself. If you want a really cool looking uh, throwback to the original Game & Watch, then I think this is a pretty cool thing to have on your shelf. Now, given these aren't cheap, they're 60 bucks, which is, or actually they're 50 bucks, which is in line with the um, other um, Nintendo classic consoles that they release, like the NES or the SNES classic that uh, you might have seen in the intro segment. And so it, it's obvious that they're releasing this so close to Christmas, sort of as a stock, stocking stuffer. Albeit not a very cheap one, but one that's very nostalgic and very cool, I think, in my opinion. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, showcase this next to... I have my... This is a fully working one. I've done a repair video in the past on this. I got a very good deal on this Octopus. I think 30 or 40 bucks back in, you know, two, three years ago. And has the original battery door cover. Everything is pretty good. A little bit of corrosion on the uh, serial number, but it's mostly still there. Very happy with this guy. And then my buddy Rook sent me uh, Mickey and Donald here, which I did a repair on. I replaced the polarizing filters, uh, albeit they're, they're kind of a little bit dark now, but it does indeed work. And this is their clamshell design. And this one has a replacement battery door cover. Uh, and it's, it's in considerably worse condition uh, than my Octopus, but it's still a really neat look at sort of precursor to the DS. And I have these two tiny little uh, keychain ones. And this is a Donkey Kong Jr. and a Mario Cement Factory. These are really cool. And so yeah, anyway, these are just sort of little keychain homages. And we have our main course. And I'm going to do a quick little unboxing. Just got this in the mail. And there you go. Just two pieces of tape. I love how they, they did the... Um, the kind of silk screening over the front for all the, um, you know, to make it look like basically the gameplay of uh, Super Mario Bros. It's really cool. And even the screen too. But as you open it, this is just a thin piece of uh, plastic, basically. Uh, you can see it has the first Game & Watch game, which was a uh, ball um, on the screen of the, the picture on the front. And yeah, I, just a quick rundown. It uh, basically has three games, uh, Super Mario Bros., uh, the Japanese Super Mario 2, which we in the West call the Lost Levels, and Ball as well. I really would have loved to see Super Mario Bros. 3. That would have That's probably pretty closely my favorite game in the series, uh, but unfortunately um, they did not. And we will do a quick teardown of this, and someone has already basically hacked this, uh, but because of the way that... Nintendo designed this. It's quite limited. I don't see them um, releasing a hack that allows you to put many more games on here, unfortunately. And it oddly has a time 
uh, display as you'd expect from Game & Watch. That's not the odd part. The odd part is there actually is no alarm functionality and there's no stand. So it basically is more game than watch. So it doesn't have this neat little kickout stand and obviously you can leave it on, but the battery life is only about eight hours. So you, it's not really practical to use as like an actual clock, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, we shall pop this open. And here has a nice little message, special thanks to you. And as the ball um, sort of segmented characters with Mario and Luigi's head on it. There is a little insert, so here we go. Uh, it does come with a USB-C cable. It luckily has a USB-C uh, charging capability, which is always nice to see. And it just falls out like so. And there is a little user manual, generally how to use it. And let's see from this side. And there we go. There's nothing else inside this packaging other than the device itself. And <laughs> we got a back shot. As I said, obviously there's no, there's an internal lithium battery, but there's no um, coin cell battery like the original. We'll do a one-to-one -one comparison. Uh, yeah, forgot to mention, this is actually obviously mimicking the, uh, the widescreen gold series as people like to call it. But anyway, see the two devices side by side. As I said before, it's missing the, uh, the stand, obviously, on the unit. In size, is actually, it looks identical. Um, the coloring is a little different, and the texture is slightly different as well. You can see my original Game & Watch is actually kind of a darker, deeper red. That could just be because the plastic is, is pretty old. It's, what is this, from like the 80s? Uh, it's copyrighted 1981, so it wouldn't surprise me if this plastic color had changed a bit. Uh, but you can see, even that notwithstanding, it is a different shade of red. Uh, we have the serial number up top here, and it looks like tri-wing screws, so we'll open that in a sec. On the front side, uh, the gold, um, metallic layer is actually pretty similar. It might be a tad uh, darker than the original, uh, but it does actually have good attention to detail, like vertical brush strokes, which the original has as well. So that's actually pretty good. And the Game & Watch logo is pretty much identical. As far as I can tell, the font's the same. The only thing is it's missing the Nintendo moniker right underneath there. We have a D-pad which feels very good, as you'd expect from Nintendo. And the buttons um, are not hard plastic. Like the original, they're actually like rubber. So that's good to see that. We have three buttons for game, time, pause, set. Obviously, they're different than the original. And we are missing the alarm and all clear buttons here. So like I said... The the um, Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch is more game and less watch. Uh, other than that, though, I mean, obviously on your side, you're not going to have a power button or USB-C on the original um, because it has, you know, uh, button cells on the side there, which the original lacks as an internal lithium battery. Uh, and we have on this side, it looks like a slot for the speaker. I'm guessing that's where the speaker resides, somewhere there. It's side firing. Let's see if this has any charge. We can uh, turn it on. Press the time button. And yeah, you can hear it. If I cover it, yeah, that's the speaker. You can see every second there's a dot that goes along, I'm guessing, the outside. Just to count down the seconds, yeah. That's an interesting touch. Get zoomed in on that. It turns red every once in a while. I'm guessing those are at, like the cardinal points. And let's see. Apparently there's a lot of hidden secrets. If you press different buttons, it'll do different things.
But yeah, um, this is time mode. Oh, if you hit time, you can cycle through different backgrounds there. Pause set. We can, uh, oh, that's how you adjust the volume. You can change the brightness. And obviously, you can go through and set the time. And if we hit game, that's how we get access to our three games. And there actually is a battery indicator, too. It's about 50% charged on mine. So let's do, you know, we have to give the original homage first. Let's play some ball. Okay. If I hit pause, okay, good. You can always access the, uh, the controls. So yeah, this is a very straightforward game. Not much gameplay to it. It's just a matter of timing the um, the hands to land where the balls are going to land. And it does speed up. But yeah. Reset game. We can go back. Let's play some Super Mario Bros. Turn that down a bit. <laughs> it's hard playing through a viewfinder. Let's try not to suck so badly now. Yeah, the controls are kind of as I remember them. I'm a little out of practice. Yeah, good enough. So yeah, I'm. It feels like Super Mario Bros. What can I say? The emulation's pretty good. I'm not noticing anything funky. Everything seems pretty accurate from what I remember. Let's do uh, Mario Bros. Two, which is supposed to be significantly harder. I've never actually played this, so. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, uh, how do I exit back? I just hit time. There you go. To figure out what all the buttons do. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> what can I say? This is... This is basically, um, let's be honest here, this is not really like a modern gaming console. This is a collector's item. Call it for what it is. It's not a cheap one, um, but yeah, it is one nonetheless. Let me just set something down, and we will pop this open. So it should be tri-wing screws, so four of them. And I'm guessing maybe some clips. Yep. Very lightly clipped. And we can see some um, plastic molding to actually support the buttons on the back. Which is pretty common. There's some rubber foam strips uh, to keep the various parts that are just kind of pressure fit. 
Interestingly enough, the speaker is just like a regular, looks very similar to like what the uh, switch speakers are. And yep, that's a magnet. And they're actually kind of down firing at a slight angle. And then it uses a plastic to direct the sound out the side. That's interesting. Uh, we have the battery here. It is a 525 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt uh, lithium ion. And looks pretty standard run of the fair. Uh, just a two pin connector to the main board. We have our power switch, which is interestingly enough retained using the plastic here, little plastic springs. And the switch itself looks very similar to the shoulder button switches on the DS uh, series. We have a um, a backlight ribbon, I'm, guess, I'm guessing that's a backlight for the LCD, and we have the data connection there. We have pretty much only a handful of chips. Obviously the USB-C here, this is going to likely be the lithium ion um, charge controller. This is right next to the battery and you can see kind of some of the pins uh, heading towards the USB-C connector. We have the main processor, which is an STM32, which is a 32-bit this is actually kind of underpowered. I'm actually surprised uh, by this choice. It's it makes sense though because they're they're pretty cheap and they're widely available. So Nintendo obviously designed this down to a price, and in order to do so, they went with pretty much as little processing power as possible, and they optimized the software to run on that. And now the reason why I say I don't see this being hacked to like load as many emulation uh, to load as many ROMs as possible is uh, the chip itself has a very small amount of RAM and it loads the game into RAM and the games themselves are stored on this little, um, it's a serial flash chip. It's like a quad spy. Um, can't quite read the number off of that. It looks like an MXIC uh, 25V8035F. And I believe from what I read, this is only like four megabytes or something maybe even four megabits it's relatively small so yes you could actually desolder that and solder a larger one in uh, they make in in this very similar like drop-in compatible chip they make them up to i think like 16 or 32 megs uh, but even then um so your roms are encrypted apparently i'd uh, read through a, a reddit post where um, someone who had access to an early unit had actually uh, debugged some of this and reverse engineered how it works. And so basically it stores the ROMs uh, encrypted on this chip. And I'm guessing uh, when you go to load the game, it actually transfers it to the SRAM on the STM32 and then runs a the game off of SRAM. So that means kind of two things. So you're limited in terms of capacity, um, what you can fit on this chip, number one. Number two, uh, we would need to figure out what the encryption scheme is and, and write our own um, to package, uh, you know, easily available ROMs uh, if you wanted to swap the games out. While that's all possible, I don't know if it's really worth it, honestly, in the end game for, for something like this. Let's just disconnect this battery first. This is just a snap fit, so you just got to carefully pull up. And I believe the um, the guy who hacked it actually used, this is a, um, a programming uh, test interface. And I believe that's how he actually uh, gained access to um, the chip. However, uh, from what I read, the firmware on this chip is actually uh, locked to the chip, so you can't do a full dump a normal way. You'd actually have to uh, use an exploit, which I believe he ended up doing, and that's actually how he found out some more stuff. And one thing to note, there is a little bit of flux left over from the solder. I'm guessing that was hand soldered at the factory. Everything else looks really good, as you'd expect. There is a, uh, a water, like moisture sensor uh, over there. So obviously if this gets wet, they can tell. And we should be able to, yeah, just lift this guy out. And flip this over and wow, I didn't, for some reason I did not expect this uh, mid frame to extend all the way down. 
But yeah, I guess the LCD is so thin and it looks like an Inelux. It's a ZJ024NA-17A. Made in China there. It's probably going to be something similar to what was in like old gen phones, that kind of stuff. It's just a off-the-shelf screen. Yeah, you can see on the front of the speaker there's a little mylar film. And yeah, absolutely nothing on the front of this board, just some um, ribbing on the plastic, I guess, to give it some support. And the buttons are all uh, carbon contacts with the carbon pads on the rubber membranes as well, clearly. And the D-pad, this is actually slightly different than I expected. It uh, kind of has a rounded edge around it. It looks different than like... NES or uh, Game Boy D-pads, and it sort of has interesting geometry. Let's see that. For some reason, I was not expecting that. But yeah, it feels legit. It feels really nice from the uh, short time that I spent playing it. And obviously, the buttons are just buttons straight through. These as well. Yeah, so there's no point in me taking out the LCD. It's just probably going to have some light adhesive around the edges, but it's just an LCD. So, yeah, there's really nothing else in here. Like I said, uh, this was built down to a price. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoy this video.